السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أني ذا دور بالطاي. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله. الحمد لله. الحمد لله الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تبدون من أنفسهم من ما لا يعلمون. الصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين. جدنا ونبينا وحبنا وقدوتنا إمامنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد قد قال الله تعالى في الكلام العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة قال تعالى كل إن كان آباؤكم وأبناؤكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال نقصتموها وتجارتكم كسادها ومساكن تبقونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربسوا فيأتي الله بأمره وتباه لليم نبينا وحبيبنا صلى الله عليه وسلم لا إن في الجسد مضر إذا فضل صبح الجسد كله وإذا فتح صبح الجسد كله ألا وهي القل كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ودي فرنس and brothers in Islam we all make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our hearing and accept all our intention purify our hearts and purify our soul and purify ourselves in order to meet all making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear friends, before I go into the topic, I just want to divert your attention towards our heart. Heart is the most valuable part in our body. We all know health-wise, Everything functions well. If there's a small block, there's a small problem, there's a danger for your life. There's a danger for your life. Whatever it is, maybe your kidney is failed, maybe you cannot walk, maybe you cannot hold, but your heart is healthy, you have 90% of possibility of surviving. So we have to keep our heart healthy physically as well as spiritually. We know right around the world, everywhere we have a concern now when we go to some food in, you know, in a restaurant, we are worried about the heart, cholesterol, our pressure. It's a lot of young boys. Even to give you a trouble, if there is anything wrong with the heart. So we are very health conscious. Physically we want to keep our heart healthy. And this is the situation in every single human being. We want to keep ourselves healthy, smart. Every day we don't fail to groom ourselves. Allah, we groom ourselves, we make our hairstyle. We want to be beautiful and handsome. It is nature. This is the nature thing that is nothing wrong. And it is part of sunnah. And it is part of ibadah to take care of ourselves. But, same time, we need to take care of our heart spiritually as well. Every day we make big mistakes. Allah was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, really explains about disease. The disease of heart, that is the disease of spiritual disease. And we know what talk is called as heart talk. Heart talk, you're going to talk about your heart and whatever pertaining to our heart. And if it's very specific, love and romance, it is something connected to heart. Something connected to heart. The love you feel, you don't feel love in the tongue. 
You cannot feel love with your hand. You feel love with the heart. You see someone and you see, oh, oh, your feet is going something bit harder. You see the report shows, oh, it's high. You see the red color, the red, it makes your blood pressure go high. Many a time, those who are the master the field of marketing, they always use two things. One is red and the other one is women. These both things that we are always, we are weak in those things. And this is the thing though. And this disease that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained, it is not always a disease. Sometimes it is welcome. Love is welcome in Islam. We need to love each other. We need to have love. If our heart is hard, hard as rock, you don't feel love. You won't have passionate towards anyone. Sometimes for kindness they will come up. You will not, you will be, I don't care. Don't worry. So it is a danger. We need to have love. We need to love each other. But the way we make use of this feeling. I want to tell you brothers, there are two feelings which generate our heart. That can destroy a nation. That can destroy a generation. That can destroy a country. You can tell me that. What are those two feelings? Yes, young man. Jealousy. Anyone else? Let us make this interesting. That you find a Papa you can't, so you have to listen whatever Sheikh says and go. But let's just make this interactive. What are the two feelings? Anger. Anger. And other one? Is love. Anger and love. It is positive as well. It is welcome. At the same time, how it can destroy, same way it can build a nation. Through love, through care, through having, you know, passion towards something. You can build a nation. You can build a society. You can build a country. We can rectify a generation to come. You know, each and every one of us is made out of love. You know that. You know, love can bring love to itself. But we have to make use of it in a positive way. These are the two feelings which our beloved Rasulullah is always he guided us to tell us how we need to make use of this. How we need to. You think, you know, having, loving something, loving something is, is not wrong. But how do we build that love? When the love does not come, that is actually you are fooling yourself, because you know, First sight love, no. Soon as first time you see, you feel love, no. That is not love, that is called attraction, that is called love. That's love. You are attracted to something. You, you want that. That is not attraction, that is not love. Love is of the attraction that is built upon it. Built upon it. It can be positive even, and it can be even negative. So my dear young men, all of us who are here, we all have this trouble in our, in our heart. We all have it. And Islam is not a religion which will go against our natural feelings. Always be a solution and guidance how we should die. How should we control that? How can we govern that? It does not go against it. And do we know the story about the Valentine? You know the story about Valentine. And many of us think, and actually, the Western society, the 21st century, it is taken as a commercial product to, you know, buy things, sell their things, and all. It is always all the festive season, 
to all the important occasion, this is, this is wait for opportunity. Wait for opportunity and okay, this is coming up, let us put up the first. Let us attack them. Let us have this week. You know, well and fine, in the name of the priest, which is called in our term, is a sheikh. You know, the sheikh who helped, helped the young men, the young girl, get married in secret. I want to just take back what happened. We are, sometimes we don't know. We just go with the flow. We just go with the flow. And before this Valentine, in the Roman time, you know, when the Roman culture was there, the Roman was in the world, they have these pagan beliefs. One of the things is, you know that, have you seen this young boy with an arrow and a heart is just shooting it? Have you seen that? You see your eye crown everywhere now. They have a belief. This is their aqeed. We call it their aqeed. It's their belief. She should not have that. It is, it is not allowed. Yeah, so we have, you know, we need more room. So, we need the guys to come looking forward. So, what about there was a day, the Roman Jews, they came up on this day, this Cupid, they call it Cupid, this guy, he shoots the arrow, wherever it goes and strikes, that person falls in love. So, they had a day, a specific day, that you mentioned is a festival day, where you can behave yourself. On that day, parents have no right to ask, why did you go around with that girl? No. And they used to gather. And they have a ball, now all, everybody come, they write their name, roll the paper, put in the ball. All the boys' names are in one. Can we do that? It's in one ball, and it is taken to the girls. And then girls do the same thing, and you have to pick one. You have to pick one, and they also will pick. So you see, oh, now it is matching. So it is halal for them, because they are culture. On that day, Nobody will ask, no responsibility, you can have if you like, and then you feel, okay, it's good, I have tasted it, nice, so let me, you know, think about getting married later on. This was the culture at that time. Then what happened, when Holmes was a king, when he came, he found, oh, oh these young children, when he gets married, they are not just at courses. So he got his bar, Saying whoever is joining the Rome army, they cannot get married. You see, the concentration. They get married because of their wife, you know, the children, family. So he didn't want that. In fact, it is mentioned that in Rome, every single citizen has to be an army. He has to join. Because this is his pride, we need to protect our heart. Our country, our territory, we need to protect it. Everything and everyone, it is compulsory. There are some countries like that. You know, it is self that, it, that, that law is not, doesn't exist here. So it, it is compulsory for them. He made it a law that you cannot get married. So again, now the Valentine, he was a priest. He was a priest. So all these young men used to go to him. And he said, okay, the Christian priest knew this is unfair. This law is unfair, so he went against it secretly. He got this married. He got this married according to the law and legislation of the time illegal. He got married, so this was happening, and the king got to know, and he was captured in the cave. There's different stories, you know, different narrations. I'm just telling one narration. This is not a Bukhari, yeah? Okay, don't, don't come and ask me whether it comes to Sami Bukhari or Sami Muslim, okay? So, this is a story. So what they say is they caught him on that day and he was killed. He was killed. So that day, again, the culture of that, the day for the love, day for the, you know, misbehaving the self, day at last, that with his Valentine, they named the day Valentine. Why to remember him? Because he was helping 
the young men and young girls to get married, to see their love, to desire everything. So then, there were so many rich letters, when he was pictured, so many letters that they found in his cave, that from the girls and the boys, for my, you know, for to my Valentine. Who is Valentine? This is this place. So they became that, remembering him on that day, they became such that they stopped worshipping him on that day. Remember him? Worshipping him? This is what the culture. And my, my brothers, if you go back, and now it has become a culture, and they have introduced this culture to the entire world, all over. It has become a national day in every single country. A day for you to seek love. My dear brothers, love is not something which is cheap. Not something cheap. I told you, that is feeling that can make a nation or it can break a nation. Make a nation and break a nation. And, if you go and take love stories from the work, you get a lot of young girls try to read love stories. The boys don't like, I know that. Boys love to watch. Yes. Girls love to read. You go to the bookshop, it's selling books and love stories. And if you go and really see all those stories, it can be even, you know, about the Khan and Mumtaz in Indian, Eastern, you know, uh, icon of love. If you go in their story, there's no real love in them. There's no real love. It was just very defined and they just passed it in this way. You know, the Bumtaz was the first wife of Sajahan. Fourth wife. Then after she passed away, he built the stick. You know, we all know Taj Mahal. You know what he did? He was so much in love with his wife, Bumtaz, he got married to Bumtaz's sister. He got married to Bumtaz's sister. So do you think that there was real love in that? Was there real love? No, we take him up in this. And certainly, we all know. And we go, it will be a very hot uh, topic, or a, a fast moving movie, if it is a love story. Huh? All get together, we sit, we have a feeling, oh, what is this? Nice, okay. But they, they are playing with our feelings, they are fooling ourselves. None of those are reality. None of them. But for oh, Muhammad Rasulullah Sallam showed us a beautiful way of love. Yes, we need to have that. We need to have the love. How does it start? Where does it start? There was a my another lecture in on hot hard talk that was on love before marriage or after marriage. You can go and see. Love before marriage or after marriage. Many a time we refer to something which is love that is out of marriage. Just, is it a love marriage or arranged marriage? Huh? And even sometimes we boys are very proud to say, you know what? I, I did it, man. You know, my first love, high school, my first love, I did it. I made it. You know, okay, that was my first girl. You know, I really, I convinced my mom and my dad was just, they were just, you know, the love was so strong, you know. Nobody could separate us. How many years? Eight years, you know. Eight years of haram. Eight years of haram. Eight years of disobedience. Eight years of disobedience. Eight years of death. Comparing death in your heart for eight years. It is rotten. And it is our heart is such a valuable and pure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember one thing. Even our beloved Rasulullah is created with a pure soul. From Rasulullah entire his progeny, the day of Qiyama and up to Rasulullah none of them even came close to him. Allah protected the progeny of Rasulullah and the answers of Rasulullah from shirk. Because shirk is one of the biggest disease of the heart. Describing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is to Allah. It is connected to your heart. Connected to your heart. Allah, even that, when our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, it was 
If you want to go and meet Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our hearts have to be pure. Hearts have to be pure. Allah knows. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنُ وَمَا تُحْتِ السُّدُورِ This is the Quran in the Holy Quran. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنُ Allah knows all the trick part of his COO. What are you looking? You see, we are wearing a nice sunglass. Okay, nobody knows where you are looking at. Allah knows it. Eyeballs go here and there. You are wearing a sunglass, no one knows. Where does it go? But Allah knows. And every time you strike a side which is haram, you remember that the dirt, the black spot is being marked in the heart. And Allah says, What are you supposed to do? So oh Allah takes the eyes and the heart. That is the first connection. أعين وما تخفي الصدور. الله نوز. الله إذا كيت نوز. Where does the connection work very fast? More than the ears. Soon as you look, soon as you you know sight something, immediate message goes to your heart. Immediate. Six seconds. You feel angry. You feel oh good, nice, love. You want to get it that something. You just want to get a feeling. Connected. All my people, Subhanahu wa Taala, refers to the Holy Quran. Allah knows what is going on in our hearts. Allah knows what. So having, you know, this love is not something wrong. And I'll tell you a story. Sri Rabi Alana, she was the slave of Aisha Alana. After she freed her, she was married to a slave. She was married to a slave, and then she had options. When she was in slavery, she was married to a slave. She was married to a slave. Sufa'a means the suitability. The both consistency. Both good means they can live. They are standing. They are understanding. Yes, they can live life. And the option was given. When she became free, now her rank has been elevated. She is a free woman. And then she is going to live with her husband who is a slave. Now she has the option, she has very clearly, in a detailed explanation. Because that is the problem of the time. Some of the time, many of us ask, why does Islam speak about slavery? Does Islam encourage? No. Islam does not encourage about slavery, but at the time slavery exists, Islam gave certain rules of legislation in order to protect the rights of the state and to make them possible. So many, many a time, the first penalty, if you do something wrong, the penalty, the first option, free a slave. Free a slave. And at this time, that was one of the most noble, you know, the noble uh, uh, act of worship. One of the noble act of worship. Doing more than giving charity, being a slave is great reward. People can, you know, give thousands of millions of rupees in charity. But having someone who is really close to you, who is taking care of you, you are you know, letting him go or making him someone equal to you. He was a slave, working, making equal to you. Master and the slave was equal, as soon as you become free. It is very difficult to ask. Islam gave this different relation. And then, Darila Radhiyadahna, she was given this option. If she likes, she can continue with this marriage. Go. Oh, she can come out of that marriage country because there is no compatibility between them. She is free and she is left to live. She took the option of, you know, I am going to come out of it. Maybe he, he wasn't so loving or whatever it is. I practiced with her. She said, no. You know, this poor guy, this poor Sahabi, what he did? He was so sorry because he, he was in love. He was in love with Sayyid Ali Adhan. He went to everyone. He went to Abu Bakr, he went to Umar, everybody and said, okay, please, you know, 
Can you fix this marriage? You know, she doesn't want me. Please help me out. Everyone, because he was in love. And then he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked Rasulullah, see my situation, the Mira doesn't want me. She's refusing, she doesn't want to continue in marriage. What do I do? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam her. I was there and told her, Allah, love if you can, you know, continue this, consider this matter. You know, those days even women were very smart. They asked, Ya Rasulullah, is it a command from you? Is it a command? Are you commanding me? If Rasulullah commands you, do you have to do it? There is no option. It's not about your heart. It's not about your love. This is way. Sometimes you like something that you know Allah doesn't want you to do. Allah says you cannot get married to a mushrika, to a kafira. Follow your heart, you love it's Allah's command. Barira Rabbiyatana, Rasulullah, are you commanding me? So oh, this is just your suggestion. Is it your mashura? Where is your command? Rasulullah said, Barira, this is my suggestion. It's not what? My command. My command. There was another Sahabi. Sahabi, Rabbi Allah. You know, these are the stories that you have to look into. You don't, nowadays, what you do? The best people they have a plan to destroy a nation. They have a plan. Not, you know, there are people, of course, not all the people who live in West doing it. You remember that. They want to destroy. They doesn't want a nation to rise and build up. The plan is to corrupt the house, to corrupt the young men, young men and young women, and to corrupt the education system. This is the plan. If you want to destroy a nation, you can corrupt these two things, three things as well. How are they going to corrupt the house? They will not be women who are willing to stay at home and serve the family members. They feel more proud. You say, you know what? I am flying in Sri Lankan. I'm a hair hostess, so she feels she feel very proud to say that. I'm working for Mr. Yahweh, she's very proud to say that. She's not proud to say that. I am a mother, so many children, I am at home, I'm serving my husband and my children, I'm taking care of them, she's not proud. And she's proud to say that. She's doing the same thing. It's worst. Every woman they can marry, she has to be so kind and loving and everything, you know. Whatever they say, she is sir, sorry sir, thank you sir. She has to do, that is her job. Although she doesn't like, that is her job. She has, she's trained to do, she has to do that. And think of that. Our women have to go out and work and she will not feel the best to stay at home and serve the household. That is how we see that. And then second, how do they corrupt young men? They take young men always look for role models. They all look for role models. Destroying role models. Good role models will be destroyed and replaced with bad role models. That's what they take. All these, you know, the media, the entire effort, that's what they're doing. We don't know. We don't know. The life behind it. How did they live? What are they doing? But we go behind it. So they destroy the good role models and bring bad role models. That's the education system they take respect away from the teachers. Students will not respect the teachers, they will not you know, uh, respect their honor day, then the teachers will not teach them. Are we seeing this in our society? Seeing. So think that. We feel sometimes if we disrespect ourselves, anybody, it can be a Muslim or non Muslim. A teacher is a teacher. We need to respect. It can be anybody. If a young boy walks out and he disrespects, you feel old. He's a cool guy, man, you know. You feel he's cool. Because he's disrespecting. And we feel a guy who is following someone, 
May Allah forbid someone who is not supposed to be so. And if you is a fool, man, you all feel that. So, everything depends on that. So, I'm coming back to the story of Fatima bin Qais. Abhi Allah, na. She was in, you know, some, for some women, some people, you know, marriage is something that it's difficult for them to work out. They have always problems. One marriage doesn't work out. This Allah has said that. So, Fatima bin Qais, Abhi Allah, na. She had problems, few marital problems. She got married, divorced, got married, divorced. I'm just putting it short. Huh? I'm not relating the exact word of the disease, I'm just giving you the story. I'm just giving you that story. So, once when she got divorced, the sister passed and said, Oh, she's not been placed. Next time, if you want to get married, just don't get married, just call me. Don't call me, okay? Don't get married. And then the uh, Ibrah was over, there was two proposals to him. Two proposals. She came to Rasulullah. She came to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, these two people want to get married to me. The name was mentioned, Rasulullah said, No, no. You know what? The first marriage, you went into divorce because your husband was not providing you enough financial support. This guy, he, he is very poor. He can't take care of you. So don't get married to him. So the other person, oh, he is very hard. Everything, first thing, he will take the chain. So he will not go with him. Then she was happy. She said, Rasulullah, both the options that I kept forward, you never take it. You should know. So what is the option? Rasulullah said, be married to Zaid. There was a Sahabi. She said, no. It's not. You know, I don't like him. I don't like him. Because he's, you know, ancestors are uh, slaves. He comes from a slavery family. He doesn't match me. You see, the heart. Remember, this is what I'm saying. Here she didn't like. He didn't want to get married. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ya Fatima, I am telling you to get married to him. It is fair. It is better for you. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, that she got married. Allah. Why? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa They didn't have love. In our, in our term. Huh? First, you don't have love. Nobody has love. It's just a She never had a person towards him. She didn't want to get married to him. The first that Allah is told to get married, she got married. And she's saying later on, that marriage only worked out. Before that, so many marriages didn't work out. She said, there were so many women in Medina, they were jealous about me, about my marriage life. My marriage life. And they lived a happy marriage life. She worked out, they just in love with him. So, sometimes we think, you know, sometimes our eyes can fool us. Oh, I'm smart, I know, this is what I want. This is what my taste is. Sometimes your heart might say, no, this is what I want. It is corrupted because we are in the digital world. We are seeing all the makers of women. They are not real. They are not real. If you live with them really, they really think, my dear brothers. You can't keep them here. They're not real. It is all in front of the screen. You know, they come. I'll tell you a story. Okay, okay. You know, uh, we came from Highway Authority. We came down to Matra and they want to take a video clip. I have identified that I travel the highway very frequently. I don't know how they identify. They want to come and ask my experience about, you know, traveling highway, convenience, and all this way. So they wanted an official clip. Came from the president's media unit. So I was just there, and then the guy came and said, you know, you go for the whole world, you know, you have to put it. I was just normal, casual clothes. You need to put something. And I, just, I was very okay on this. I said, okay, right, fine. 
I will give you free word. Fine. They said, no, no, no. It, it can, it can, no, no, no. You know what? I'm speaking, man. Can I just make up you? I said, what? You know, in screen you will not look nice. I said, you mad? He want to just put some powder and just it, brush me up. To look very nice. So, you, you know what to do? It's not real. It's not real. The sky to show you. The screen doesn't show you the real beauty of it. No, you are looking at that. MashaAllah, you feel okay. I want someone like that. You will never find someone like that. You will never find someone like that. And, my dear friends, if your heart is darkened without Iman, you know, Shaitan, what is that? Shaitan deceives you. Gur. Shaitan shows you, tonight, she may look nice. Oh, nice. You go to another place, you see someone else. Oh, she's better, man. You go somewhere else, you see another one. Oh, better. Now you, can you decide? Can you decide if you are just looking at the physical beauty, you cannot decide for yourself. Always there will be something better. You are having a nice iPhone, you know. New version comes up. Oh, my wife. New version. Every update. That's just no. Yes, she will become new version. In a character. In a character. She has loyalty towards you. Yes, you can. She will be more responsible. She will be loving you more. She will t- be taking care of you more. Yes, that's the new version. So you add every year, you know the love that you express towards him. In your halal relationship, every day there will be a new life for you. And that we need to build on. Nowadays, what you have thought is that love is something which is out of marriage. And marriage is our official life, you know. You know, you have an official relationship. There's nothing. We are so excited, you know. We are so excited. We saw marriage, the phone rings. You know, a guy was... I don't know if the guy is here. Let me just... Okay, no, no. He's not here, okay? Don't worry. He looked at the phone, he was with me. The phone was keep on ringing. She peace. It's an emergency. He went... Okay, what emergency? He was a young boy. He was like, his mother is calling. He was fine. Came back. He came back and he was a bit upset. His face is really worried. I said, what's wrong? Go shake. You know, it's leave it, you know. Let him go on. I said, what's wrong? You know, he was really upset. You know, you know, my girl, she, you know, she was calling so long, you know, I didn't answer. She, she's calling and she, she broke up with me. <laughs> she just doesn't want. She said, she's so upset. He's so upset and he's so dedicated. He feels so excited and he feels so worried about that. But he managed phone rings hundred times. Hello? Yes? You know, he's not excited. This is what is happening in our society. You must be excited to listen to your wife's voice. Your mother's call. Receive your mother's call. Your sister's call. Your daughter's call. These are the people, these are the opposite people who you can have real love with them. Your spouses, your parents, or her husband. When your mother calls, you need to be really exciting. Yo, my mom is calling. Waiting for her call. Checking her. You are not excited. What has happened? We are in in whole day, Shaitan is deceiving us. Shaitan is deceiving us. Shaitan is taking us to great point. And remember, I will guarantee you, I will tell you hundred times over and over, very hardly, only 10% of so-called love marriage works out. 90% fails. I can bring you examples, not only in this country, right from the world, everywhere, it doesn't work out. There are so many psychological reasons and spiritual reasons behind it. It doesn't work out. Yes, if you want to, but if you have attraction, yes, it's someone has given you a message, yes. You have the feeling towards it. All the young men have this. Tell them, worry. See, okay, you have worry. You want to be married. You want to be married. One day, one young man, he calls me up for a few times, you know, he rings me, he rings me, he rings me up. 
and I and the end, I never knew this number. The end it picked me up. Shake. I'm so out of my call. I'm really troubled, you know. I need help. I said, oh, late in the night, the guy said, message like that. Immediately early morning, I call him up. I call him, he need an answer. The whole night he was awake, and he's in the morning. And then he answers. And he says, you know what? A problem. What is his problem? He was in love with a girl. He never told that. This is called attraction, and he was going on it. He never told her. And then... That night, the evening when he met her, they were going to go to classes, they were eating together, but they were friends, you know what you call your friends. Tell your brothers, no boys, you should not have the opposite gender just as friends. There is something beyond that. It's always that. If you say no, it is friends, that means you are lying to yourself. Maybe first time, yes, but then you frequently change. And you feel complicated. Satan plans. Satan wants you to fall in trouble. Satan wants to destroy you. Our biggest enemy is Satan. He knows how to destroy us. Our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi I have never left behind me a fitna a test to men which is more harming than women. It's really if she's good my dear brothers, if you get a good wife, a good partner, you just, just think that the Jannah, the life of Jannah begins from here. Life of Jannah begins from here. But the thing if you get the one that is not the correct, then remember the life of health begins from here. You will not like to go. You know, there was a brother. When winter person, you know, when they go in Jihad, they go house to house, and they met a brother, and he said he was speaking about Jannah, you know, this life is very temporary, we get to live in Jannah, you know, if you obey Allah, you get as a family, if you want to live in Jannah together as a family, he said, what? What? If she's going to be in Jannah, I don't want to be in Jannah. That is not my Jannah then. That is not my Jannah then. And you know what? The wife asked, do you, do you dream me? Do you see me in dream? He said, he said no, no, no. I read eyes of truth before I sleep. <laughs> but I read eyes of truth before I sleep, so I don't dream you. I don't see you in my dreams. That means what? What does it mean? You are my shaitan next to me. What to do? No option. I got married to you, I'm leaving. All this happens if you don't have a proper place. Condition. And proper intentions versus wine. We all have needs. We all have this, this feeling that we need to govern it. And you need to preserve it to someone that really worthy. Really worthy to get that. Really worthy to get. I'll tell you the real, there are so many love stories. You know, so many love stories. If you go into the Hayat of Sahaba, the life of Sahabas, and even you go to the fear of the every incident is how much he expressed his love towards the others. Have you heard about the story of Ummu Salama and Abu Salama? Ummu Salama and Abu Salama. This is the real love. They were separated for a year. You know, Ummu Salama, without failing, the story is that they, they, both Ummu Salama and Abu Salama. They embraced Islam, they migrated to Abyssinia, they came back to Makkah, when they came back to Makkah, they got to know that Prophet ﷺ is preparing to do Hijrah to Medina. They are the, they are the people who are first migrated to Medina. Abu Salam and Umu Salam are planning to migrate, then they were leaving, the, both the families came, and they said, Umu Salam said, you know what, you cannot go. Umu Salam, if you want, you go alone, we can't take our daughter. And Abu Salama's family came and took Salama. Salama is baby. You can say you are. This baby belongs to us. You cannot take Salama. Allah Akbar. The situation is very really bad. You are married. And then you know what? Abu Salama's love towards Allah and the deen was more than any of this. He said, I don't care. You keep my wife, you keep my son. 
cheat my wife and cheat my son. I'm going to still sit in the hospital. I'm going to do it. But Allah replaced it. Allah gave the life back. And then, Ummu Salama never failed. Every day morning she comes out. It was a stone known as Safra. They say the stone. She used to come out. And until the time of her, she used to stand there and cry, cry, cry and weep. Thinking about Abu Salama. How many months she did? She did. She did this for one whole year. Allah Akbar. This is Allah. One whole year. One whole year. You know, you can say so far, so on you love. Every two days, three days, you cry, it's over. Hey, you hey, know, man. I think it's so much better. Everybody, this is what But she loved to us. Abu Salama is so strong. She cried for a whole year. The entire people of Makkah, even the Kuffar, felt so sorry. They all went to Ummu Salama family and said, Don't you have a heart? Don't you see that she's craving, she's crying for one whole year? And this whole people, all the Makkah people, and told her, Just please send her. Allah Akbar. This is love. And Ummu Salama radiallahu anhu asked him to Ummu Salama. Ummu Salama. Ummu Salama read Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun. There is no one Allah says it to be Inna Lillah. Replace with something else. Ummu Salama is thinking, who can be replaced my husband? He is such a loving and good husband. No one can replace No one can replace him. Allahu Akbar. She was a such noble woman. Allah replaced. He married to her. Our beloved Rasulullah She became the Ummah Hasul Mu'mineen Ummu Salama radiallahu anha One of the servants of believers This is what you call a love story This is what you call love You know love does not come Our day, not nowadays What this world is teaching us Love, love No responsibility No commitment No sacrification No dedication, just love it's good to party. But to go out and have fun, you know, have this one. No. Don't destroy your life. This love is something which is really important. And you know, ro- romance is just part of us. There are so many stories. Once I tell you something about it, again, I'm not translating the exact word. I'm just putting it in a picture that you can see the story. I should say, Lana, she's a young girl, you all know. She was a young girl, mother of the believer. Allah gave her that opportunity, you know, Allah gave her that opportunity. She, she was a Indian young man, you know, African, some African cultural uh, game, when wrestling was going on in the Sufa of Medina. Aisha radiallahu anhu was inside, she was, she had, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi saw that she was hiding, hiding and, you know, looking at it. She was a young girl. Then Rasulullah <laughs> being so elderly, having so much of responsible, he understood the feeling of his beloved wife. This is something. If you love, you know, this is what love. Nowadays, love is about your feeling. Fulfilling your desire. If not, you break up, no. Love means, if you really love each other, that means you will respect the other person's feelings. If you love your mother, that means you will, you will respect your mother's feeling. What is we don't care? You say, I love my mother. But you know what? No, I don't care. And it comes to this. If you love her, that means you will not, you will not be able to, you won't, you won't be able to break the feelings. It's always you keep them. Mr. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Chief and Aisha, the Rana, I said, do you want to see us? The Holy Spirit, please explain so nicely. said, I tell them, you know, when I was looking at it, I was hiding behind Rasulullah and sometimes I used to keep my cheek with Rasulullah Rasulullah was taller than I should but then she used to stand with her toes. This day for a while, again, next night for a while, and Rasulullah was three times. Is it enough? Are you done? She said, no, Ya Rasulullah. Second time asked, are you done? No, I want to see more. 
third time are you done? Then she said, yes, I am done. And she said, Wallahi, I didn't want to see that but I didn't want to miss that feeling. You know, seeing my chick, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a romance, my dear. This is love. This is a argument. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was having this. And I said, when ever he used to notice, you know, many of you are not married. I am telling this, you need to practice this after marriage. After marriage. Don't get me wrong. Okay? You know, I am going to follow Sunnah to invite your, whoever it is, to restaurant and you can you see her. And Mr. Sultan was sitting down. She was feeling upset. Allah Ali was telling us to read the mood. This is something very important. This is something very, very important. Your partner's feelings, you must understand. There is a certain language which has been spoken. It's called silent language. When you call, can I have, hmm. You say, hmm, you must know. It's not this. It's something wrong, you know. They don't speak. But you need to understand with their physical expression, you need to understand it. But Slava Dhrushtra, I to notice that. This is it's called romance. And she was down. She was very upset. Whenever there is a, you know, a cup or mug or all, those days we never used to have this soup. We have this modern cup. They used to, you know, we, we have soup. Soup all. That is the ancient style. They used to hold the hands and drink. When you go and see, even in our country, they, used to have, they never used to have a cup with the hand. They used to have it with the cold hand. So, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to take the bowl. And turn it around and see where Aisha radi Allah and Hakim um, I used to keep a sweet on it and to drink Allah. This is a romance again. Why? Expressing your love, your feeling towards your halal partner. Halal partner. And I'll tell you my dear brother. When you, when you make use of these tips, what I'm saying, your halal marriage life, that you grow. Every year you get a new version of your wife. The wife will always improve. Your life, even your, you will become so nice. Okay. Once in time of Amr Shirman, I'll tell you. Let me come back to that later on. Uh, do I have more time? Yes. Uh, so, why love marriage doesn't work? Something to remember, that is what before marriage is not love. I, again, I tell you, attraction, love, desire that you want to have. Okay, if you take it, it is really love, yes. You really want to be that person. But if Allah has come to Allah says, haram, you cannot have any relationship. So do you feel that, do you think that you will get any blessing in that relationship? You will never get your blessing. You will never ever get your blessing. Every day, whenever you see men, and then you all know, you call it, every day you see, you get a feeling, you get a feeling. Whenever you get a feeling, if you want to meet that person, you end up meeting with so many people. You're not going to have a respectful life. You cannot build a family. Because that is nature. We love our sister, Allah, Ali, and sister himself has told us, when you go out, when you see a woman and you feel so, you go back to your wife. Go back to your wife and, you know, rectify it. Come back and you have that love, the romance, whatever need you have to fill it, then it goes off. If you keep on, now you just saw something, now you want to just, just leave it. You know, okay, you track it, you fail, it won't work out. But remember one thing, Allah has written that so and so is going to become your wife. Allah has written so and so is going to become, you know, your husband. That will definitely happen. It will definitely happen. You don't need to go behind it. Allah will bring to your feet. Allah will bring to your feet. That is the story of Shuaib alayhi salam's two daughters and Musa alayhi salam. You know, Musa alayhi salam, he was a young man, he was smart. You know, he was really clever. And he was a, such, a, such a young man. He had all the natural things and power. He never used to stop. He never, he liked to become second. He used to always ask questions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave each of a different character in order to teach the Ummah. In order to teach the Ummah. You know what happened to Musa alayhi salam? Allah's plan, 
His beloved wife is in Midian. She's living in Midian. She's living in Midian. And his beloved wife is living in Midian. Allah must send him there. He must go, oh, Shaykh Ali Salam's daughters must come to Midian. What happened? If, if in a town, sometimes we think some sort of happens. Something happened, we think it is, oh, it is bad, it is sharp for me. Calamity, no. Through that calamity, Allah brings fires for you. This is a calamity for Ali Salam. He was in trouble. The armies were looking for him. He has run away. He went to a village where no one knows him. He don't know where to go. But what Allah did? Allah, Allah made him to meet with his life partner, daughter of Shaykh Ali Salam. How did he do? What did he do? When he saw that, he also felt it. As a young man, he did not know where to go. He helped them. He helped them with the... What? Honestly, he didn't help them to, you know, attract them. You know, just like this one. Ah, my muscles. He wants to show some guys who just, yeah, keep tight and go young, walk like this very hard and so, you know, I'm, you know, muscular. No. Ali Salam did not do that. Ali Salam felt this young brother standing. Everybody is there. You know, they were, you know, feeding their animals. They were alone. He felt this something strange. Why these two young girls are out? Allah said, why are you both are here? He asked him. And he helped. Okay, I'll help you. And take him off. After then, he lay down and think, okay. So, and then, he got attraction. He has a feeling, now he said, what he calls the attraction, he had it in his heart. But, he took him behind spoke, then he looked behind and see, where, what is the address? Go and search his place, he can see, oh, just look at the Facebook account. She uh, emailed address, she picked up, and I get the telephone, but no. He left the great Allah. You know, Allah has everybody's telephone number. A direct line to the heart. Direct. Direct number. Allah can connect. If you connect it today, you connect it today, Allah will connect himself to halal name. Musa alayhi salam said to yourself, oh, oh, don't go around, you know, with a red t-shirt, you know, on the 14th of February, walk around and think, hey, anybody gonna put me a flower? No. Don't come to sleep. And don't go around and you say, you know what, don't do that. This is a culture, it has been introduced to destroy us. Take our modesty away. Take the respect of women away. This is what. Who's Ali Salam said that? And he was sitting back and make dua. Ubi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. This is Allah. I am in need of. You have to come with me. And he said in his heart, oh, this is good, but I don't know what Allah has said. No, no, maybe Allah has said better than this. We were just looking at someone who we feel. Allah has said someone better. Someone more beautiful. Someone more loving. Someone more respect. We were just looking at it. Ya Allah, what you have kept for me, Ya Anjalta Ilayya, in khair, in khair. The good that you have kept. I am in need of it now. Young men, find it difficult, you know, 15 years, 1920, I don't have a proper job, but I can't keep myself, man. What do I do? You know, connect yourself to Almighty. Connect yourself to Almighty. Don't do other shortcut. Way out. Temporary solutions, no. The temporary, your temporary solution becomes permanent. You become dedicated to that. The temporary way out, you look, okay, just for so fun, after I get married, I live out. It becomes permanent. You know what? You need to deal with that for the rest of your life. Don't take a shortcut. Shortcut this is a real problem. Many young men, and it is a danger, don't. Just suppress yourself. Suppress yourself. Ask for me, Allah. Allah will definitely give you. Allah, I am in need of it. And this, after the it opens, oh! The girl is back here, she's saying, you know what? She also spoke in a very rough tone. My father is calling you to reward you. You help me? Yes, he's calling to reward you. Okay, fine. He had no hope, he was looking. And she was looking in the front. This is Islam said. He in Holy Quran, the way she walked. She did not walk. 
you know, make everyone <laughs> make noise and everyone to see her. No, the Uzubillah. Allah says, in Holy Quran, Almighty it says, وَجَاءَتْ إِحْلَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى الْتَحْيَا Her walk was a walk of modesty. Modesty. Nowadays, we don't know that Allah forbid. She's our responsibility. Our sisters, maybe our sisters, our aunties, nephew, whoever it is, remember, if we men, we can guide them, we can protect them. If you must feel that this is my sister, I must protect her. You cannot allow her to become so cheap. You know, you cannot allow her to become so cheap. You cannot, you cannot drive, you know, nowadays. You cannot drive. You can't go with the children. It's very good to be there. To say how much they expose where they are living, the modesty is gone. This is what they are living in a very dangerous society. She talked with modesty. For answer the question, this is the Baha'u'llah alayhi salam said in the Hadith, the modesty, the Haya of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam did not, oh, oh, have a nice view. Seeing in the stand, you walk, you go up and down, come. Allah knows why are you walking, why are you standing in the stand, Allah knows. Do not take it for bus. So many times bus is going, no, no, you're waiting for another bus. You're not waiting for that. Allah knows what you're doing. Musa alayhi salam said, you know what? We are people of... For more lectures, visit slhub.com Aya, we have modesty. We don't walk behind women. We don't walk behind women. Women have to walk behind us. Why? Please, when you walk behind me, it's, it's difficult for you to lower your gaze. You will somehow look at her. You have to look at her. He requested her to walk behind and then guide him way to go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely gave him. Gave him a and further does not speak about his marriage life is very short. In Quran, Musa alayhi salam's marriage life comes only after his nubuwa. Till nubuwa, till he became covered. You know, she was expecting, they were coming back to Mr. She was expecting all these stories there. For Ten years he was there serving as a, you know, shepherd, all those stories, and then half that, Quran does not continue. The reason, when Quran mentions a story, there is a purpose. There is a purpose behind it. If Quran shortens it, that means there is no purpose behind it. He didn't want to elaborate. Definitely, he has a good life. Definitely, he lived a good life. Allah granted him, you know, the love, whoever he wanted to get married, Allah granted him. This is Allah's plan. So, my dear young, then don't think, don't think that I'm smart enough to find the best partner for me. No. You are not smart enough at all. You have so many obstacles. And there is a reason behind why you should not have a relationship before marriage. The partner who you have relationship before marriage is so by now. One reason behind is that every day, every day the angels are cursing you because you are sinning. If you change your heart, even in your salah, your salah is a hot salah. When it vibrates, haram be she. It's haram. Haram in salah, even when you're in the class, every time it's salah. So, that is the main downfall of men. Don't fall, that is what you can say. Maybe we divert focus from ourselves. You know, the reason behind, the psychological reason, one is spiritually we are being cursed. We are disobeying Allah. Allah. Any any act of disobedience, there is no God. When there is no God, you see in a marriage, dua wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, So if you already started a relationship, what are you going to get to God? You will never get to God. It's not some of the times some of us think, you know, relationship between physical relationships. No. And psychologically, we cannot have any relationship. Leave it. Because it's something which is really valuable. You need to preserve that to someone who is really worthy of seeing that. Don't cry, don't cry, and don't feel upset. Don't, you know, break the to someone who is not written for you. He is not someone who is going to dedicate life to you. Remember that. Nowadays, we are ready to do that. We are ready to do that. We are all, we cry, we do everything, don't. That Allah has to dedicate. I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like how Musa alayhi salam did dua to Allah. The khair you have kept me, give me. Fatima bin Qais 
she didn't have attraction to a later of the man, she obeyed to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah put Taraka missing in her marriage. I can that. The reason behind it, why the marriages doesn't work out, if you have relationship, connection before, you know what happens? When you have relationship before marriage, every time you try to only express your good heart. When you feel, when you want to dress, sometimes you don't have a good shirt, you call a friend. She goes, I have that. <coughs> Leave my things then, you know, just for a party to give me. It's not yours. But you will just grow. You will your phone. You will get an iPhone if you just go with me. You just want to show how. And it's just your car. You get it on your friend's car, or you get it off, and oh, she feels impressed. Oh, you know, you want to show off. You wear the smartest shoe, and you put the good perfume in there. Every time, you're always, you know, so loving. Whenever you go, you go, stop, stop meeting her, go and stop, buy a chocolate, or some small gift. Oh, small card. You know, you're so excited. Every time you have to do this. Both, not only you, even she does the same thing. She's so excited, she does up so nice, you know. She just come, she display only her good mood. She displays the best mood, you know. Women has very strange moods, my dear brothers. You know, you need to, you must do PhD to handle that. I think some married in a day, you know, it, it works. Sometimes you think, oh, who is she, man? Why, this is not natural, Allah has kept it. Allah has fixed it that way. We need to handle that. But, out of the marriage, before you get married, she never expressed these things. She will not do that. She will express in a way that we want to be together, yes. She will trouble you, she will take what? Be together. Because it is haram. Shaitan had dreams, mashallah. Nice dream. Shaitan always say, no, no, don't worry. It's good, mashallah. No, shaitan will take that until you indulge in zina. No. Until you do that, once you do that, shaitan is starting to make you. But that is the, that is the exact mark in your heart that will never ever be erased. You will never enjoy your halal marriage life if you have physical experience with another woman. Write this down, my dear brother. Write this is down. You will never enjoy, you will never enjoy unless you make sincere sawbah. When you make sincere sawbah, there will be still a Christian mark in that. Because that first impression is the last. That experience is the last experience. That's what stays, stays in you. Remember that. Shaitan will take you unto that and Shaitan will make this ah, she's done. He did that. This is Kawahir, Kawahir. Shaitan in anything, even good things. Some of the time you're doing volunteering, mashallah. Men and women together, we do, you know, voluntary work in school. We have a school society, so we work together. You know, on time we try to work, show off. Why? Impressing each other. We will try maximum to impress each other before marriage. We will never ever display our shortcomings. Always we will put forward the good character of us. The good appearance. Everything good. But in marriage can you do that? Can you keep all that? Before marriage you don't meet, you don't live. You meet, you know, maybe once a day or once a week, once a month. So you are able to keep up with that. After marriage you say you need to sleep with her, wake up early morning. You know, you know what happens when you wake up early morning? Ah, you, you have to. So sometimes, then, then they start noticing the bad part of it. You say, oh, no, that's not the same person. This is the same person who I love. He's changed, he's different. This is a common, this is a common complaint which we get from people who had relationships before marriage. He was, I thought, you know what, Sheik, he was nice, you could. Brother, I can send you emails and give you emails about the protect and see the story. Read the email. They were going out for eight years. How many years? Eight years. 
I was married six months before him. Allah was. They were able to cook for eight years. For six months they can't stand. Na'udhu Billah. Why? This is why are you getting married? This is what his love is all about? This is what his woman is known. This is something feeling which is really beautiful. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, a child which is born with halal and proper love and romance relationship, that child will be psychologically really healthy. A smart child, a children. Any child born to society with a broken heart, you know, we say it's weak, you know, they are. spiritually they are weak, psychologically they are weak, there are many ways they are weak. You see, through this love, if you don't make use of it, if you don't protect Gawan, this, this love will take, destroy your human feelings. Human feelings will be you see, every day. Last year, last six months, this is the report which was given in news first. 66 still born, just born baby children in Western province alone. They are dumped in garbage. You know, not even a dog will do that. Animal will not do that. This is the result of love outside marriage. Human feeling. Love towards a shy, innocent baby. Goes away. Destroyed. Feeling and respect towards our mothers and sisters. You know what happened? This was a young boy. He is going meeting a psychiatric. You know, he is, you know, his father is well to do, so he has money to spend. Nowadays, girls are very clever. They know how to get, you know, they are for that. You know, because that. One day, one young boy was saying, if you take, I did something, if it is right or wrong, I don't know. You know, I have a fake account. Yes, I have a fake account. That I have mentioned the girl's name. I was taking this boy. The boy and I gave my number and every day he puts me 100 rupees bill. I get every day 100 rupees. I've been doing this for long. Now I feel it's bad. But I have used it. How do I do it? I don't know where he lives. He's asking a fatwa. I ask how long? I don't know. But every day he doesn't fail. I never spoke to him. Only text him. But I get it. You know, my brothers, you can be fooled, you know, they can fool you. So, there was a young boy, he's now, you know, consulting a psychiatric doctor, what happened? Many girls have played him out. You know what he played him out? He's really, he's a good guy, you know, he's he, oh, when they just show the third to his face, he's feeling down. Oh, you know what, he's, give every guy, buy gifts, you know, he has enough of money. He has that this to everybody, all the girls have taken him. You know what he's saying now? He's saying, women are liars. Even he doesn't respect his own mother, own sister. He thinks all the women do the same thing. Because all the experience, what he had is that. See, he doesn't respect his own mother. He has problem with women now. He has got hatred towards him. That is his own mistake, my dear. That is his own mistake. So this love is something, a feeling which is really valuable. That Allah has given you, you need to love your family. This love can take you to Jannah. This love can take you to Jannah. The romance that you have with your wife, your halal wife, can take you to Jannah. Can take you to Jannah. That is the Ibiza. It is written as making zikr. You take you to Jannah. And you can live together with her, Allah Subhanahu Subhanahu wa ta'ala, before giving Jannah to Adam alayhi salam, Allah gave his wife. We need that. Even our Jannah will not be completed without our beloved wife. Our Jannah will not be completed. So Adam alayhi salam was given the Jannah, uh, you know, Hawa alayhi salam generally given Uspun anta wa zawjah al Jannah. That's the Jannah with this is something very, very important, my dear young man. Love is something really valuable 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us to love anything in this world. It can be even your mother, your children, your father, anyone. More than Allah's deen, Allah's rasul, and Allah. If you love anything in this world, more than Allah's deen, Allah's rasul, and Allah, then Allah will teach you. That was the test Allah teaches Ibrahim alayhi salam. He got it through. He proved, they love my son, yes, it is difficult, but Allah, if you command me to command him, to provide him, I am ready to do. I love my wife, I love my wife, yes. But if you tell me to stay away from her, leave them alone, I am ready to do, Ya Allah, because I love you more than them. Didn't Allah make them the icon, the leaders, the entire ummah in the day of Qiyam? Allah did it. If you love anything more than Allah and Allah's Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah will test you. Sahaba were ready to do that. They were ready to do that. I'll tell you a story and conclude in Egypt. This is on the, you know, headline in the paper, in Arab news, and this long time ago, what happened? There was two, Sahaba, they were living together. They had two children. But later on, they discovered they are still brother and sister. They have been settled by the same mother. They have been settled by the same mother. Can they live? It's calm. But they love each other so much. They have so much children. The mother was in the court. If the husband doesn't divorce her, if the wife doesn't request for divorce for separation, she has to go to the Kazi and Kazi has to separate. They should call it first. Separation done by the Kazi, by the authority. So this sister was taken to the court. She see the scene. You know, I can, I, 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 I lived, I watched this. You know, I, 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 I was in tears. The children are crying. They were they lived such a beautiful life. The husband and wife and parents and children together. They went, they went through the basic records, proof, everything is proven that both of them are brothers and sisters. They are, you know, siblings, suckling, you know, to a mother. The court verdict, they cannot continue their marriage life. They have to be sisters. The media is coming and asking, media is coming and asking, why? What do you say? Yeah, the entire international community, human rights, you know, all this, the children, they say he's crying, she's in tears, children are crying, and she said, this is the Creator's command, we cannot go against it, we have to accept this, we have to separate. Some can also say the same thing, this is the Creator's command, we have to separate. My dear brothers, how are we looking at Allah's command? I will tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's command. Deen, are we, do we give preference to that? Or are we giving preference for our Allah? Then this Almighty says, if you have given preference to enough, then it is your desire. You see, that you have what you call it, that is enough. If you have your desire, then your final abode is going to be Jahannam. May Allah forbid. May Allah protect. So many brothers, remember that is very important. And as men, as young, we know about parents, they have knowledge about us, always in this marriage. Even they need their parents' permission without us to get married. Young boys, we need their blessings. They know us better than anyone. You know, they know us better than anyone. They know our feelings. Our mother knows us more than what we know ourselves. They know about us. So, many times you give preference to their choice. And if you do not like, keep yourself to Almighty Allah. Get the blessings. I'll tell you, you will never ever go wrong. You will never ever go wrong. This February month, it does not, it's not a month of love. No, it is a month of haram. Where it's been promoted publicly. So I do want each one of you to put a comment on Facebook, to promote that, to share thoughts on that. No. If you're doing that, you are helping the Fahish. If you're exchanging any ideas about that, 
Any idea of the person time, even you are not involved, even any ideas, you have to be realistic. No. At the time, he was a priest, he was worshipped. Love is something that wants to be married every day you need to express. Married, yes, you need to express your love to your mother, your sister, and your love towards your creator, you need to express. So, my dear brothers, love and romance is something which is really valuable, feeling that Allah has given us, we need to make use of it in such a way that we can build ourselves and please Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this feeling. When you get a feeling you need to guide it properly, learn it properly, you know, think about the reality, not about the desire, think about the practicality, not about the desire, think about, the, think about Allah's command, think about it, and then that is your final day you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give all of you beautiful partners which your heart desires. Say Amin brothers. And those who are married, may Allah make their partners, their existing partners, you know, make them a new version and come them back, you know, in such way where they will be pleased and Allah give, you know, and blessing your inshallah in your future marriage life. And now I want you all to concentrate on developing yourself. On yourself. Don't concentrate. You become a person, definitely Allah will give you better. If you want someone really honest, honorable, respectful, you become someone like that. So that's what you have to concentrate now. So concentrate on yourself, you become smart, definitely Allah will give you someone better. So I open the, uh, you know, for you all to questions, and then we will conclude it, inshallah. You see, uh, we all, you know, we are not angels, I understand, you know, we are human beings, so don't feel that some of the time, some of my statement will have made you really frightened, oh ho, oh, I've done something bad, so I have no hope, no, there's always hope, la don't lose hope from the Rahman of Allah, inshallah. but what Allah wants, from the time you realize that you want to take up, you realize that you have done something wrong, I mean, people. now what do you do? This is Allah, not what you have done before, and you can have done. Satan will say, you know what now? You already done, no worry, you just go on doing it. But anyway, you're not going to rectify this, Satan will put this type of demoralize you and say, you know what, you cannot be a good person. You already done, no. Whatever I said before, those who are trying to feel okay, let me have that. Whatever in relationship or you feel something, like I told you a story in the end. I told you a story about the Egyptian to make immediate attack. Say that cut it off everything. And return to Allah and Allah. Ask Allah. If Allah has written that girl to you, definitely she's gonna come back to you. She's gonna come back to you and you connect yourself to Almighty Allah. But Connecting yourself in SMS, you know, I'm today in Tawajud, I'm making dua, don't take her. Your Tawajud, your duas, don't take her. And put a dua in your Facebook, in your timeline, Oh Allah, give my beloved, make her to be my partner, no. So don't make dua in public, that means you have not really made dua. So we have to cut the relationship off completely. So immediately, return to Allah and make dua. Change your telephone number, whatever Facebook contacts you have, Facebook block, close it down, everything. If you are really sincere and if you love yourself and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to do that. This is simple. There are some other issues, there are such questions here that uh, I would love to all to, whoever is in real serious trouble. There are situations that the doctor must have general prescription. You have a Headache, uh, which is Panadol. General prescription. Not Panadol and General prescription. Sometimes general prescription will not work for some patients. Because their problem is much more deeper than what we think. It's not a general problem. So I would request those who really feel that you have trouble, consult the Sheikh. If you feel really comfortable to talk, tell your problem, do not 
go and you know boast out and tell everybody about your problem. Maybe as an example, you, know, you can use his own name and location or anything, but still, you keep that in your mind and consult him and ask his advice, description, how you can come out of that problem, that disease is facing. And then that will, that will be more appropriate for you to do that if you have any uh, problem that you can be related to. This is a problem that we all face, basically, so that. So anybody in relationship, please, so this is the testing time for you. That you, there is remaining, that she is expecting a gift from you. And you are expecting a gift. You have already, you know, you're going in the gift. You have already, okay, I'm going to address that. You have already planned you're going to go there. Just make go by immediately. Say, right, I'm going to keep it down. You don't need to explain to her. No explanation needed. Only thing is, you know what? I feel that this is not good, we should not, we should not continue, cut it off, and ask Almighty Allah. Do Tawbah, do Shirfar, return to Allah, and read this Dua, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin fukhid. This is a fun verse. Keep reading this. Allah is definitely, I have seen, I have advised, I have advised. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a joke. You know, I advised a young man who was in university. He, had, he always used to consult me. Every time he has this problem, he says, you know, after today I can't concentrate problem. But my he was be honest. He was I in this dua. You know what Allah made? He keep reading this dua. Allah made him amazing. So I to my sister. You know, I never knew, I never even dreamt it, I never even thought about it, nothing. He read the dua, he became my brother, I recognized my sister. He's still studying in uni. But Allah will never waste his dua. So I have seen this. You know, I have seen the results. Of this. So keep this in dua. Allah can change. Uh, there is a serious question that you know it's a present problem of the society. We all have this problem. It is the uh, homosexuality. One question has come about this homosexuality. You know, uh, I think that's why, in, without clearly explicitly telling you, I told you don't look for temporary solutions. Don't look for shortcuts. I told you in my lecture. You remember that? You remember. Don't look for way out. You know, always look for the correct path. But sometimes I told you the temporary solution that you are looking for becomes permanent. Some are in that trouble. And there is a question about it. You know, one thing we have done in the Ba'ir, which according to Islamic law, they have to be killed. They have to be killed. And Quran mentioned that the in such a way, Quran says that they are worse than animals. Worse than animals. Animal does not have attraction towards the same gender. Animal is, you know, even dog does not have, he does not have. The human being, we are honorable creation. We are going to such a low level because of our nafs and desire and looking out just to think of our desire alone. I would be like a very bad act. But still, if you have committed or if you are committed to something like that, you still have hope. You don't need to go and say publicly, everybody, you know, there was other day someone who, you know, he actually take, took a picture and said, someone in prison has said, what's wrong have you feeling towards the boy? Is he said it is status of dead in Facebook. Don't do that. Don't, don't make this process public. You know, don't make it public. Make Tawbah, return to Almighty. Again I tell you, whoever in a problem like this, you need to consult a sheikh, a scholar who can spiritually guide you and take you out of it. So that's not, again, a common, a common problem that we need guidance from a, you know, reliable person. So that is something very important. We are, we are actually, uh, we are in discussion of having a teacher, inshallah, make dua for that purpose. So you can, two shiuks will be there, so you can, you know, appointment, take appointment and consult them, and they will give you a time. You know, actually, all the teachers will see, some of you might be really angry with me, I see a lot of messages on Facebook. You know, I am unable to answer every message. I'm pretty sorry. I'm unable to answer every message, phone calls, or message is really busy, but still, inshallah, we are trying to work out. We need to give time for you all. It is our duty, but then you have to understand our situation as well. 
But still, inshallah, we are trying to work on a plan where you can consult jokes, inshallah. You know, co- co-education, this is a real problem. All, many of us think, oh, who, how many of you are studying in mixed school? Raise your hands. Don't worry. Even in uni? uni? Mashallah. Yes, sir, mashallah. You know, every day you see the girls just in new clothes. Yes. They don't repeat the same clothes, you know. Do they repeat? They don't, you know. <laughs> okay. They, you know, that is a real problem. It is difficult for you to protect your Iman because you need to work together with them. It should be that. But still, pay every you can draw your line. You need to have a conscious about yourself. You, you, you are having now, for example, you feeling some excitement on seeing her. If you get up early morning because she's going to be there on time, then there's trouble. So, this is what you have to watch out. You need to know your case. It's a real problem. We hope that already will create a better environment. So our family and nature, they, they, they want to go through this situation where they need to handle all the stress. But you cannot have, you cannot have a girl as a friend. You can only have a boy as a friend. Not a girl as a friend because it's going to go beyond. That's why I told you one guy called me. He was as a friend. Maybe a girl can. She will not look at it. She will not have that mentality. But as men, we are unable to do that. So maybe you have that, then you are in trouble. You tell us, you see, you, you see, to having her as a friend, remember, if someone else becomes closer to her and trying to become her friend, if you feel jealous, then you are not friend, okay? You are more than a friend. So that is the, that is the reality. If you are friend with her, another friend of you would try to become friend and you are more closer, you feel jealousy, you feel worry, you get angry, then you are more than a friend. So this is what, this is very difficult, you know, so that's something very important. Con- marrying and converting, you know, as a Muslim you marry them and converting, you know, brother, don't take a risk. Huh? Don't take a risk. You're not going to buy an uh, Indian vehicle and convert it to a Japanese or a German. You cannot do that, you know. You need to buy a Japanese vehicle and modify it. You know, you, if you want to do that, Buy a Japanese vehicle and then, then you modify it. Don't buy an Indian vehicle or, you know, like, you know, I'm driving an Indian vehicle, I'm not going to try and buy it and, you know, replace it with Japanese. That is not difficult. If, okay, you fell in love or, you, you know, I don't say it's cheap, you know, it's cheap to use that. You have to practice towards her and you want to and then, brothers, she needs to live as Muslim before marrying you, will be at least minimum one whole year. She needs to go through a tarbiya, complete tarbiya, being a Muslima. Being a Muslima. And, then, and I know certain instances are happening, for married. So, you know, marriage is a risk. It's a two way. You, when you play a match, you can win, you can lose. Same way in marriage. Same way in marriage. You may be, you will, you will be able to win the game or you might lose. That's why Allah has always kept the way out. Allah will not keep the mark. He is always going to win. So, in this case, in this case, if you lose, there is danger. Your children Iman in danger. In this case, if you lose, then you are in trouble. So remember that. She has to live a Muslim life at least for one whole year. Yes, there are always cases. Some, you know, convert are living a better Muslim, better life than for born Muslims. Yes, we have seen certain instances, but you cannot take that and generalize it for all the situations. Same way, you cannot say that all the converts are going to be bad and everything. You need to balance it, but we don't know what will be our challenge. So don't take that risk. Yes. Inshallah, uh, and replacement, you know, everybody is it's tradition and depression. Unfortunately, everybody tries to keep it around relationship. A tradition has come from one of the audience, uh, is one of the states as well. Important you try to express your love to your mother. It's good. Absolutely, very good. You know, if you, have, you want to buy a gift, you've already bought it, give it to your mom. Give it to your sister. You know, give it to your sister or give it to your someone who is welcome for you. And express your love towards them. Even your grandmother, you know. Even your grandmother, don't worry, you can love her. You know, she, her dua can take you to me. 
and your grandmother, you can do that again. Brothers, expressing your love towards your mother, you have to express that every single day. Every single day. No, they sacrifice their life. But if you want to go out, go out with your mom, go out with your sister, and you know, have something, have a chat, just do that. You keep this in your mind. Take this and you need to love your parents every single day. Take this idea. Take this idea. Why is this idea away? On February 14th, this is not a day for love. It is a day that they have introduced calm, lust and desire. They introduce all the Wahid. That day doesn't belong to us. They worship the Valentine. They don't worship. So, no way, no in the word, text, anything. You don't, you're not going to promote that. You're going to promote the Qur'an love. You're going to promote the Qur'an love. So, that, keep that in mind. Don't make that day difficult. They have Mother's Day, Father's Day, all this. The days why they attack it, the uh, children, 64 days, then we go to Mother's Day. No. Every day is a Mother's Day. Every day is a Father's Day. You need to learn to express that, love them, you know, have regard to them and honor them. This is something very important. Keep that in your mind. Make all of you the coolness of your parents, you know. Their eyes, inshallah. Allah accept you all, inshallah. Get their du'as and always give their blessings. You know, keep this in your mind. And inshallah, all of you, I want all of you to say no for the Valentine's Day. Say no. Go back. Write to your Facebook say that no, it's haram, it's not good. Keep this coming and spread this message among the friends and say this is not a day for us, this is a day for the Muslims, for haram, this is haram, so we need to get to have got so much of explanation and ideas and thoughts. Keep this message for your betterment. What we are saying is for your betterment, not what is going to happen to me or anybody here, it is for your betterment. So if you want to enjoy, a beautiful life in this world. Then after that, then the peace of God may come. And the Prophet ﷺ said, "Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah, Rabbil alamin." Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.